Hello my soccer universe, let's look at the transfer window. Again, I'm looking only, I'm, I'm not one of those that follows every transfer, blah, 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 but you know, it's, it's always interesting to look at the end of the transfer window and kind of recap what was happening. Um, I'm varying the jersey of what I think is are the big winners in uh, Juventus or Fiorentina North, as I'm calling them from now on. Sorry, still having Africa background. I'm not gonna change it now because you know the next thing yeah, it will be very much Africa heavy uh, all the videos for the rest of the week. So um, Why switch out and <laughs> spend a lot of time, but you know, I'm wearing at least uh, Juventus uh, Yeah, and the other big team that we'll talk about is of course uh, there were lots of things happening at Barcelona Which I think is of interest a little bit also in the Premier League I would say we go league by league, but before that also, yeah. Uh, my two teams, Lask and Milan, <laughs> I expected more. I expected more, but you know, on the other side, uh, let me say uh, beforehand, I always hated the January transfer window. For the simple reason that um, you build a squad, for, you should build your squad in summer and then have that squad and all the, some, all the mistakes that you did in the summer, you should have to live it for the rest of, of, of the season. I really don't like that. Juventus suddenly uh, really is a much, much stronger team than they were before. Similar uh, Barcelona and especially, yeah, I know it's smart dealings and, and, and so on, but I think to me it is not a representation. I think when I have look at the championship, I want this is the championship for the season. You had this team, with this team you achieved that. This is kind of nice and neat packaging. Not that you can uh, boost or suck out uh, things mid-season that just doesn't seem right to me my personal feeling about that but i i never hate hate, hate hit the window for me ideally there would be a season then in the off season there's a trend is transfer season as soon as the season does or even a week before the season starts to get everyone in training camp that's the stop of the transfer uh, window uh, for the one period that i would allow for and in addition, I actually think that the leagues should at least kind of coordinate when they are starting off so that there is really in the calendar. This is the date when the leagues are starting. I mean, uh, in Austria, it's even that you have in summer, there is like the window is open until uh, the end of August or something like that. And the league starts mid July. Yeah, it doesn't really make sense. Uh, as for Austria, I said, Lask uh, rid themselves of loads of strikers without bringing anyone in. Uh, not the, I mean, Karamoko hurts a little bit to Copenhagen, but I think that's okay. And then Moncha never was good. And then, yeah, we needed defenders, so we got two two defenders, but one check from the Slovakian league and an Ivorian from uh, the Bulgarian league. It's not the thing that gets me excited, to be honest. Given what we have lost, uh, now I don't think the Lask is getting better because of these transfers. However, I think that in summer they got some interesting players in. Um, but the big one in uh, Austria is Rapid, who basically exchanged their entire front line in many ways, which I was really surprised to see. Uh, but they also got Damia back from Barcelona, so I'm not sure. I actually think that uh, this was probably smart dealings over for Rapid, but it might not um, go well for this season. But in the long run, it might be good. So those are the two that I, I can say in Austria that made the most headlines. In Germany, not much happened. I'm see. I'm looking at Wolfsburg, where Weghorst got sold to Burnley. Uh, I'm a little bit sad to see Weghorst leaving, to be honest, but they borrowed Max Kruse from Union Berlin. It's in one of those transfers that to me doesn't make sense, but I think he uh, played for Wolfsburg before. I think the biggest transfer is, of course, that Leverkusen got Serdar Azmoun from Zenit St. Petersburg, the Iranian Messi. Uh, which will make Leverkusen's frontline a pretty potent uh, proposition. England, we have a, there's, there's a little bit more to talk about. Um, I think the main player late was Spurs. However, early on, uh, we had the whole mess at Everton, where now we have Frank Lampert in. Um, but, you know, uh, they got uh, Dini off, but now uh, they got Van de Beek, Ali and Mikolenko in. I think those are decent transfers. Um, and uh, Aston Villa, I think, did uh, a big return of Philip Coutinho and Lucas Dinia, which actually will make them stronger too. I think uh, those are good transfers. I think uh, Everton will probably avoid a re re relegation if those can be put nicely in, 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 into the team. 
Newcastle also was of course very active at bringing in Kieran Tupier and then also Bruno Guimaraes from uh, Lyon. So let's see how this will go for New Newcastle. I think many Newcastle fans expected more. So be it. But I think uh, most of it was Spurs where they could get rid of Dombele. Uh, Milan didn't take him. He went on loan to Lyon. More on that a little bit later. But uh, they also got, uh, so they lost him, but they got in Kulusevski and Bentancur, which I think I think is pretty cool and uh, getting rid of Dele Ali, who was a, unfortunately a little bit of a, a dead weight for them. Um, I think that was a decent business. I mean, it's, I nothing that will get Spurs fans excited, especially if you got hijacked by Liverpool for the Luis Diaz uh, uh, deal. Let's see how this will work out for Liverpool. But I think that a contact got at least some players that you know from Juventus. I mean, I will call not Tottenham Juventus North obviously uh that he can actually talk to them he probably has a good uh rapport with and that will actually strengthen punctually the, the spurs squad and make it a little bit stronger that's at least the feeling that i get from every, everything and i think luis diaz is kind of a bargaining chip for liverpool especially since he's kind of uh, moving for uh Mane to kind of you know if there's a counter extension you know we have actually your know, successor lined up this gives you a little bit of leverage which is a big uh, thing the whole leverage thing as for France I really only the only thing that I said I'm PSG didn't do anything um, maybe it's probably good for them I would, I, I, I would say uh, but Lyon has now a midfield where they could play a 1-8-1 formation Got in Ndombele, they got in Fevre from Brest, who actually was linked to Milan at one point, who had been really outstanding. Um, let's see what they will do with all these midfielders, whether they can build something from that. Uh, from the Netherlands, the only, the only notable transfer is that David Neres from Amsterdam went to the Ukraine. Uh, but, you know, he was already not a, a play, uh, really playing a lot, so I think that's fine. Um, Spain, we had... I think there's uh, two. I mean, uh, Sevilla really tried to get something, you know, to maybe mount a title challenge, getting in Anthony Martial and uh, Tecati to Corona. Okay, so Corona from Porto, which is basically uh, all that I can say from uh, Portugal is, base, is base basically that Porto is losing two big players. Um, so, yeah, interesting stuff there. Uh, I think Martial gives them a little bit uh, oomph up front, but we'll get to see uh, how it will work out. I mean, it's a loan where they have no option to buy, but you know, they kind of try to build something. Uh, and then Barcelona, I actually have to say, I mean, I'm not really excited about the players they brought in, but you know, getting Coutinho off their books, that is a big move already. Uh, it seems like they could get rid of um, Dembele as well. But that did, didn't work out. But who did they bring in? Adama Traore. Yeah, it's a loan. Don't see him as a Barcelona player, but maybe he will provide a little bit more speed up front. They brought uh, Ferran Torres. I think he could work very well with Barcelona. And then most importantly, uh, very late on, Obama Young. Yeah, I'm not excited about Obama Young. I think Obama Young should be happy that uh, in his career... He uh, moved from Dortmund to Arsenal, then stunk it up at Arsenal, and then he moves to the next bigger club in Barcelona. It just does make sense, tells you how desperate Barcelona is. However, he will be an improvement over whatever they have in attack um, as long as Ansu Fati is out, I gotta say. And then Valencia, also too sneaky, with uh, Brian Hill from Spurs, who, uh, you know, who just came... In, I think from uh, Sevilla could play very well and then Ilaj Moriba who just went from uh, Barcelona to Leipzig and now to Valencia let's see uh, not much we can say about Portugal so let's go into Italy where I think Inter made another great transfer not very happy about that um, with bringing Gosens from Atalanta pretty good deal um, however, it's all about Juventus and let's call them Fiorentina North from now on uh, to kind of at least a little bit give back. The way they are fleecing Fiorentina, I can totally understand why Fiorentina fans are upset and then, you know, even if the owner says we are not selling Vlahovic to Fiorentina, I don't think he had much of a chance, but getting Vlahovic elevates Juventus immediately to the next level. I think we can now, and Juventus needed to do it to secure top four. 
this is the transfer of the transfer window. It's an absolute uh, linchpin up there. Also gives them leverage over Dybala and Morata in many ways, you know, uh, in extending their count, count consequences, because, you know, Dybala was not happy, blah, 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 blah. And then they said, we have here Vlahovic. What do you want? Go shop, see if someone wants to play your dad much, much money. If not, you can always have a small contract here because we have Vlahovic now. You can try that. Uh, so, yeah, um, but also they got rid of Ramsey, which to me was the dead weight of David. Did this was the most nonsensical transfer that Juventus ever did to me. Uh, although I I, I I rate him as a player, but for, for Juventus it never made sense. Uh, and then Kul, uh, Kulusevski maybe hurts a little bit, but Bentancur, you know, has not been all the all great. And then you get Zakaria in. You got not only did you get players that will make your squad better, but you got also younger. And all that when you were crying foul that you don't have money. Yes, all the dealings and you know with all the creative accounting, it's probably working uh but yeah juventus i gotta say they did a good job the one thing that fiorentina north um di uh, did also for the real fior fiorentina is fiorentina has not a whole lot of money and they for instance got Icone from lille which i think is a good signing and other players as well so um i think uh, from a business side Getting all that there, that money will probably make sense for Fio Fiorentina to build something more. You lose a bit a really, really good striker. However, you can use this for team building. And I think that might be a uh, capital well used. Milan, one transfer, one player in, no player out. I was hope, hoping in a, in a way to get to load Cassie off and get a little, a little bit money for him. But the player in is an Irish under 17 captain. Really has me excited. Really has me excited. So Milan is locked locked in. Uh, I hear there will be a big transfer window coming up in the summer where they don't, um, you know, Milan, I have I have to be fair, Milan are, are still under financial fair play uh, restrictions. So that might make it a little bit harder for them to really go all out. But losing Vlahovic to Juventus. Not that they were ever really going in for it at this moment. But uh, they had looked at Vlahovic for a while and then he just exploded on us. Um, Losing Vlaovic does hurt, because that would have been a nice player, but let's see. See the season out, finish top four, out, finish top four. That's what I'm demanding from Milan at the moment. I think a title challenge is illusionary. Uh, Derby come, 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 come up this weekend, so let's see how it goes. So yeah, that's my recap of the tra transfer meet. I would say you were the big winners. Barcelona, I would say not exciting, but rather good. And the rest, yeah, it was a rather blah window. I actually I'm curious to see how Coutinho will do at Villa. That uh, that to me is one of those transfers that uh, I find really interesting. But yeah, from now no transfer. Everyone has the squad and let's get going. In any case, please let me know what you thought about uh, winners and losers in the transfer window. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel to see more. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!